experience Elizabeth. It all starts here. Welcome back to the second half of our city. Today we're discussing Estuary Day. And joining me is Lisa Barron. She's the project manager with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Welcome, Lisa. How are you? Great. Good Thank to you. see you again. You too. Uh, I'm not going to say welcome to the show. I'm going to say welcome back to the show because you've been on here several times. And over the years, uh, we've talked about Estuary Day, Environmental Day. Tell us what the Corps did or what had planned for the students last Friday. You know, last Friday was a great event, and, but first I want to thank you for having me on the show Our again. Pleasure. I love being on your show and especially the opportunity to right. share what the Corps of Engineers uh, does in this estuary, and especially since we just had Estuary right. Day last Friday, um, there, was, there was almost 250 students and teachers that were there, and I was really honored. I got to do the opening remarks on behalf right. of the partners uh, in the opening ceremony, and, uh, and as well as have a classroom that was stationed there where I had the kids, each, each school mm -hmm. coming in and out and giving them a presentation about what the Corps is doing, what the Corps is doing in the estuary and really also describing and educating them on an estuary. Um, a lot of times they, they don't know what an estuary sure. is and you know where salt water is coming in right. and mixing with fresh water from the land and just really letting them know how important the estuary is in their, uh, in their region. Good. Now, the Army Corps does a lot of great work in the estuary with uh, many different missions. Can you tell us about these missions and the types of projects you're working on? Sure. Um, we have primarily three specific missions within Civil Works. I'm a project manager within the Civil Works program. And uh, one of the first, probably the most longstanding missions has been the uh, navigation mission, mm -hmm. which since we are here with the Port of New York and New right. Jersey, uh, we're, we're dredging, deepening, and maintaining the channels. We are responsible for about 240 miles of channels wow. within the area, as well as uh, a, a really important mission, which is life safety, is mm -hmm. protecting and reducing the risk of flooding within, within the communities right. and the infrastructure protection. And then the third mission, which I primarily work on, is ecosystem restoration. Um, I've been working on the ecosystem restoration projects uh, for the last 25 years, actually, wow. um, with the state first, and now with uh, with the core in the last 12 years. But you know, bringing back the mm -hmm. habitat that's been lost and improving water quality, sediment quality, and all the just the ecosystem services to the region with our partners. Now you just touched on a lot, but what other types of projects are the core working on to improve the shoreline and reduce the risk of storms for our community? So not only do we hope that the ecosystem restoration program will provide natural and nature-based features that will make the make our shorelines more resilient and sustainable but probably one of the uh, should be the most appreciated projects that the new jersey residents want to see is when they go to the beach right. and uh, beach nourishment jobs and over the years you know, every year you go and see the shoreline getting short, smaller and smaller and smaller, yeah. just from normal wave action and from storms. And our beach, just our how much sand we've put on the beaches over the years. Just since Sandy, we did 30 million cubic yards right. of sand in New York and New Jersey, and more than 10 million um, on uh, on Seabright to Manasquan. And the 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 uh, Philadelphia district has done many more you know projects southern New Jersey. But we think that, that that's probably the most important from a standpoint of how they want to spend their summers. And right. you know, I love to go to the beach. So protecting the infrastructure and the communities that are behind those beaches is really important. As well as one of a really high priority project that's going on right now is the New York and New Jersey tributaries, uh, um, tributaries Harbor and Tributaries Focus Study. And that is similar to our restoration program, as I manage the Hudson River and Estuary program, which is the whole entire estuary. They're looking at not only the whole study area there, but all the way up the Hudson River and trying to look at mm -hmm. um, what kind of storm protection and right. coastal storm risk management and flood measures would be most appropriate for mm -hmm. the region. And they've looked at all sorts, I know there are, a report came out at the beginning of 2019, and they've done like almost 24 public outreach meetings mm -hmm. where they've looked at all different measures, shoreline measures, water-based measures, like flood walls, sea right. walls, levees, beach nourishment, as well as tide gates and, and coastal storm barriers. And so right now they're 
in the middle of evaluating mm. all of those structures and those alternatives right. based on modeling efforts. And hopefully they'll come up with solutions um, that are expected and planned for the middle of next year, like spring of 2020, mm -hmm. uh, to determine what's the, the recommended selected plan or the selected plan, tentatively selected plan, uh, probably in the spring time period. Okay. Yeah, and so there'll be more public outreach meetings for that. I know. Quite a few, I'm sure. I know <laughs> that Elizabeth is gonna, your, your uh, communities are definitely gonna wanna right. know about that particular project. Now, another very important resource for this region is the uh, port here in Elizabeth. Has the Corps uh, been working on any additional studies or activities since the successful completion of the deepening of the harbor to 50 feet? Yeah, so in September of 2016, we cele celebrated our, a really big accomplishment, which was deepening the port to, to 52 feet or 50 feet, but we overdredge. And uh, for the 35 mile mm -hmm. uh, miles of shoreline or channels that are coming in that are actually coming into Port Elizabeth, Port Newark. And, um, and since that, we've been maintaining those mm -hmm. channels. And so we do operation and maintenance on making sure that we maintain that investment that right. occurred. And there was an investment of $1.6 billion um, for the port, for those channels to deepen. But the ships keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And to keep up with them, uh, we're embarking on a study now uh, that mm -hmm. is the New York, New Jersey um, uh, deepening or channel improvement study. Right. And so looking at working with the port authority to determine what's the best way to um, address those growing, those growing uh, the cargo to come in, right. so that it still is is so whether it's widening yeah. or deepening further, but to keep those big ships coming in in the most economical way possible. And as you talk about it, it sounds like an easy concept, but how do you deepen a harbor 50 feet? Do you remember those days? <laughs> you know, it's taken a very long time right. to get to get to 50 feet because historically yeah. the the estuary used to be 19 feet deep. Right. So, you know, when that, those initial, initial construction, you know, it starts very small, you're deepening, deepening those channels. And over the years, and, and just the harbor deepening, going to 52 feet, just in the last 20 years or so, we removed 60 million cubic yards of sediment from that. And it's, it's hard to imagine when you throw out numbers like that or what is a cubic yard. Right. But I always tell the, the students when I explain this that, one cubic yard of sediment is filling your wash machine at home. And so, and we say, okay, that kind of volume is 30 Empire State buildings full. Wow. <laughs> or, you know, a football field filled to the height of the Empire State, or yeah. filled to the height of Mount Everest. I mean, that's a lot of mud. And yeah. so we've done fantastic things with that dredge material that we've had and beneficially used them, where we've, if it was rock, um, right. we've made fish reefs, if it was contaminated, we stabilized it mm -hmm. with cement and we made, uh, uh, put it under the capped landfills like the right. Bayonne, Bayonne landfill or the, uh, the Elizabeth landfill. Right. So your New Jersey Gardens Mall, <laughs> it's got dredge material yeah. underneath the parking lot. So capping landfills as well as clean material building wetlands right. in different areas in the harbor. So you talked about a lot of programs and a lot, a lot of great things that's going on, but what other types of programs does the Corps have that are important to the estuary? So I just mentioned the Civil Works programs, and um, we do so many other things. And some of the other projects that, that actually are, are being implemented in the estuary uh, are environmental, uh, environmental um, remediation type of projects. We have an interagency and international services mm -hmm. program where it's a former support for others. We work for EPA. Right. We clean up former defense sites um, and Superfund sites for EPA. So we're doing working for them on various rivers um, mm -hmm. in the estuary. Uh, we have a, a harbor operations mission where we are out there every day collecting drift mm -hmm. from from drift that's floating around in the harbor. So anything that would be a, a problem or a threat to safe navigation, we're out there. And then we use those cranes when something bad happens as well, like a helicopter goes down in right. the harbor. Or, you know, the, the landing on the Hudson, you know, with, yeah. um, you know, the, the plane crashing. So we've done a lot of different things, plus responding to also natural disasters mm. um, nationally as well, you know, in Puerto Rico. 
um, forest fires in California. Right. So we've, you know, we've also done a big response mission um, whenever there's a natural disaster like that as well. So it's never a dull moment or a boring day in your job? No, no. And I know uh, there are a lot of people that I work with that have, have uh, very exciting um, missions that they get to go right. on. And, but never a dull moment, that's for sure. I can tell that you like what you do because you're very, very passionate. And uh, what is the, wh why is it important to share this information with the students about Esther every day? Well, I think that um, it's so important that the students understand the environment and the importance of the environment and the importance of an estuary. And we have all these resources that are right, right outside their back door. And that is critical. And then when they go home and they talk to their parents and their family members um, and being on this show, you mm -hmm. know, educating the communities about just how important um, the environment is. And, you know, the theme from for la last week was and what I heard over and over again is they make a difference. Right. The children make the difference and they are the future. Right. They can make a difference now with just uh, programs that uh, just having the knowledge mm -hmm. and what they can do to improve the right. estuary and make sure they don't litter and that, you know, garbage doesn't go down storm drains since it ends up in the estuary or um, or just that they can, when they grow up, and soon mm -hmm. enough they're going to be the future workforce. Right. And I always tell them, I always start out when I, when I get a new group in the classroom, okay, who wants to be in the science field? Yeah. Um, and, you know, you get some people that, that are excited to raise their hand, but then I always ask at, afterwards, okay, after you found out what I do, you know, what kind of a career would you be interested in a career path? Because as a project manager at the core, we need, I manage, um, a lot of different types of people on my team. Right. I need a lot of different expertise. So I say, you don't need to be a scientist. Mm -hmm. You don't need to be a biologist like me um, or an engineer, like most of the engineer, the core right. of engineers, but you can be an accountant or a lawyer, or you can just like to operate big, heavy equipment and move dirt. Right. You know, we talk about moving dirt um, or operator vessels. Mm -hmm. And so if they can get a career um, in the region, in this field, whether it's with the Army Corps or with our partners, um, that's really important, well, yeah, important for the Corps. I want to say thank you, commend you for all the hard work that you do and tell you thank keep you. doing it. Um, congratulations on another successful estuary day. Thank you very much. All right. I want to thank you all for watching this segment of Our City. I want you to have a safe and wonderful week. Thank you. <music>